Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Turner Podcasting System. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going a bit off the beaten path. Normally, we were going to uh, do pay-per-views, which we will get back to, but we're not strictly set on a formula. We really wanted to do this Kitchener, this Kitchener Nitro. So this was the Nitro right after the fall brawl, which we did the week before. Now I'm going to put this into context as I introduce my co-host here. At the time of this Nitro, probably I would be walking in the next day or the morning of into say my science class and I would be, I would see a guy sitting there and he would be with the big eyes in the morning. He wasn't tired like he looks now. Back in the old days, this guy had energy for days, even at 8 a.m., ready to talk about wrestling. Here he is, my co-host, the WCW expert, the Stinger. Welcome to the show, Stinger. What's up, buddy? Mr. Press, Happy New go. Year's. What's up? Happy New Year's, bud. It's technical difficulties. It's a good sign for 2022. Yeah, uh, always a pleasure, right. buddy. <laughs> always a pleasure doing a show with you. Science class, always fun seeing you in that cane shirt. Good old 2000. Uh, absolutely. My friend, how was everything on your side? Oh, good. So the website just officially dropped as the time of we're recording this. and. Tonight at midnight will be the first episode going live on YouTube and on the uh, on the podcast platform. So TPS, not the tax thing, but the <laughs> the podcast is now TPS. online. TPS, absolutely. So, so yeah, back off. in the day in high school around this time, uh, yeah, I was always wearing wrestling T-shirts. I had cane shirts. I was really into it. Um, then our high school got uniforms at some point, and that cut out the um, the wrestling shirt uh, wearing at school, of course, because that of it course, was no more DX, no more Kane, no more no Stone more Cold, yeah. no more Austin, no more Goldberg. Uh, it was just uh, beige and blue, which was absolutely uh, we won't even comment on that. Uh, but it was the fun days where we'd buy magazines from your local Archambault, six ninety nine for the WCW magazine, or it was the World of we uh, Wrestling magazine, a little more expensive. I think it was around eleven dollars, but they were great magazines. Yeah, they were great magazines. Uh, it was like the the magazines were still much more high quality info and shit than absolutely. the websites at the time. Absolutely. That was our YouTube at the time. We didn't have YouTube yeah. in 2000. We barely had uh, 100,000 sites, uh, you know, uh, so uh, worldwide. So where would we see our recaps in the magazines? World of Wrestling, WCW, the WWF Wrestling uh, magazines. Uh, you, uh, Prez, actually, I remember we had um, – you remember in our classes, we had always had an hour to read. We were forced to read, either bring yeah, a magazine or a book. So stuff. you'd bring like 12 WWF, uh, like Jack Tunney, uh, the cartoon era. Uh, you had brought them and you lent them to me. So I had like at least a year's worth of different literature. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, Mr. Even, uh, I had many uh, wrestling magazines for sure. For sure in those days. And WCW had their own magazine. Absolutely. And again, the recap. So Nitro, Thunder, pay-per-views, we couldn't see that on YouTube. It was all on the good quality mags, only for $6.99 back in and the day. They had like articles there, like Conan would write an article in it. Absolutely. The, you know, it was, it was uh, quite the variety. Yeah, uh, that's a big example. And uh, it just shows to you that, you know, 22 years later, we can see everything now at the click of our, of our phone or our finger, right? So it was just... Um, Sometimes they even had magazines that you couldn't find. Like uh, there was the, at some point I couldn't find WWF. It was I would see like you know uh, online commercials, but it, yeah, that was even the day. Like of, now, now wrestling magazines. The only ones that exist is like Pro Wrestling Illustrated. 
Yeah, absolutely, which is huge. I think huge, WWE but... doesn't even print them anymore. No, they don't. Everything's on the site and on your phone. So, yeah. 2022. It was a different era. Absolutely. Yeah. So, the yeah. Era. So, we'd be getting into class and then probably bust open some wrestling magazines. Always crack it open. We didn't even get worn. Like, uh, like, hey, enough of those wrestling. Yeah. Wrestling. And we're like, no. And we would go in the, uh, the actually, we would put mats. <laughs> Gym class. We used yeah. to give each other rock bottoms. Uh, you gave me a, you gave me a nice, clean vertical suplex. <laughs> you were... And I would take a bump. I, I like taking bumps, but no, we were we were good wrestlers, man. We were literally 14, 13 years old, and we were good wrestlers. We knew how to land and you know take the bumps, so it was good. You were the one mostly taking the moves, but absolutely, you were so much you were so much smaller than me because I had failed absolutely. a grade, and absolutely. now now you grew up. You're bigger than me now, but as a kid, you were like. One of the small kids in in like sec one, and this was absolutely, like- bro. You you were like Shawn Michaels. I was Triple H. I needed you to survive uh, in, in sec <laughs> one. So uh, DX was formed uh, in two thousand. And, and uh, big shout out. Yeah, two. Well, do, before we get into the pay per view, the two yeah. major big because I remember we would often do moves, but. We would never get hurt or anything. No, no, it was for fun. You know, we were like, oh, you know, let's do this. And, uh, you know, it's just fun. Two major things that we did and no one got hurt. I remember once in the gym changing room, there yes. was a big, big mat. Like It was an ocean of mat, actually, man. It was, yeah, it was wavy. Just like get... They threw a bunch of mats in this one corner. And we got up on this half wall which was like to separate the showers, but no one used the showers. No one you did. Could stand. No one did this except us. You could climb up there and stand on the half wall. And I gave you a rock bottom off of that. Into the mats, the mat, but we <laughs> sunk in. Remember, we sunk yeah, we were in stuck after there. And the bell this was rang. hardcore. The Absolutely. bell rang. And, and we, we were like stuck there. We're like, we're going to be late. <laughs> this was a pay-per-view moment for us in high school because we sunk down under the mats and then we had to go to class. <laughs> and we're That's like, hey, what big, are you doing? Maybe and like 10 feet of big mats. And we were stuck yeah. there. Yeah. And dude, there was maybe <laughs> what, like five on us. So we couldn't, like, we were, you know. We weren't. We didn't weigh that much, so those we, we got overpowered, man. We got overpowered, Shane McMahon style. So <laughs> and yeah, so we didn't get in trouble for that. No one, we didn't get in trouble for that. But the other time, I remember once we're in that science class with Miss Russo, who we had as a teacher, who was this like very boring lady who like we Br- brilliant class. but very boring yeah she so was we nice. always, she was nice she was nice like, but it was so boring like 1960 science teacher boring and i man. believe we actually had her for math and science in the same classroom and sometimes we would have it back to back absolutely so in other words it would be snoozers yeah for like <laughs> half the day <laughs> it'd be I like a thunder once. She wasn't in class yet, and we were talking about wrestling, and somehow, for some reason, we're like, okay, I gave you a power bomb on the desk, oh, but man. not full force. No, it wasn't a jackknife or anything. It was just like, you know, you I gave me a power you bomb, and you still, light. yeah, and you still kept, like, you know, you still held me yeah. doing the power bomb, like, but you placed me. She is... My back, my back's to the door. As I have you up like this, she comes. She's literally the door behind you. It's and pretty she much. Sees me power bomb you on the desk, and she's like screams. She's like, "What's happening, John? The like, Mr. Prescott?" And... and then she like brings me in the hallway. I thought she was gonna try to get me suspended, which I was always getting suspended in those days, anyways. So I wouldn't have been surprised. If she would have brought me to the principal's <laughs> office, if that principal, Mr. Pro, would have saw my face right away. Suspension, like, oh, suspension right away. Suspended, suspension. Suspended. Suspension. Definitely. But I told her, like, no, no, no. Look, we know what we're doing. We do this all the time. And I even like, said, yeah. yeah. Right. She's like, 
I never seen someone do that. Like you, you had him over your head and you slammed him. <laughs> you power bombed him, Kevin Nash style. But uh, yeah, she, yeah, it was fine. It was fine. Like we <laughs> never got hurt. We were always it was consensual. <laughs> and one third story that just came into my mind. Once it might have been no, it wasn't the same time. It was at the end of a class, but definitely in the same class. I gave you some kind of. <laughs> <clears throat> I slammed you again for some reason onto another desk, but there was a girl sitting on a desk minding her own business, but this girl had attitude like no one else in our school, and she had the biggest ass in our school. I hope she doesn't listen to this, but as <laughs> you slammed... Your hand hit her ass by mistake. And, <laughs> and she, she was. thought you were trying to grab her ass and she slapped she was the shit out of you. Not happy when this happened. And I got David flared right there at that moment. <laughs> <laughs> so, classic times in 2000 yeah. where we were good wrestlers. We even pulled wrestling moves in class. <laughs> and we were actually trying to reenact probably Nitro or the like Thunder. Kevin Nash. Or it'd be like uh, rock bottom. So we'd mix both federations as well. Um, but we stuck to a lot of WCW storylines in school. Indeed. But I remember, okay, so let's transition here. Getting into the Nitro. At the time, I think I remember really liking Kevin Nash and thinking he was pretty cool. The one thing I'm getting from watching these three shows we've done so far in a row is that Kevin Nash sucks in this era. He's like the worst part of the show. And as bad as he is in the ring, his old man daddish promo jokes backstage are like even worse. What do you think about Nash in this era? In this era, at the time, I totally agree. I used to think he was cool because, you know, it was big sexy. The NW Wolfpack was recent. He was just a badass. But he, like, looking back now, he was so lazy. And, you know, yeah, he did rack up a few injuries, but he was so lazy. He came in in his jeans and his jerseys, which props to his jerseys. He had a lot of good uh, football you know, basketball, hockey he teams. Cool. He always represented. He did look cool at that time because jerseys was huge at that time. Yeah. Still is at the moment. But 2000, we're talking about jersey era here. Mm -hmm. He wore everything from football to NBA. But I think he was pretty lazy because, you know, like, yeah, his uh, daddy jokes came out. Uh, he, just, he was so sloppy, honestly. Like, he and couldn't like, even wear his attire properly. Like, you just, you know. He was worse than Lex Luger wearing FUBU. Uh, like now Luger looking back, Luger's yeah, the FUBU. Young. For sure. <laughs> kind of like Conan. Conan was cool, too, at the time, walking out like Conan that. Was but, very he, cool. but he was still a bit, you know, more professional because just, you know. Nash looked like he just woke up two hours before he got to any, any show, bro. <laughs> and, like, as you'll see here, it looks like he literally tries to probably, before the show, be like, Oh, I don't need to wrestle tonight, guys. I'll just do some like weird... yeah. I'll show up and be Here's funny, quirky. People want to see that. That's it. You know, it's like they don't want to see Nash and his uh, broken knees uh, wrestling. We'll just you know pop a few jokes out there and get paid a lot of money. Some kind of old man uh, jokes like he does, and I think at the time he's not even in his forties yet. So like, I don't know why he has such a like. He was just—he was just lazy, man. Like, dude, they got paid so much. I just did. And you could tell by the like, show. At least I showed up. Like Hogan yeah, that's is still it. getting paid millions, and he doesn't even have to be here anymore. Exactly. So as we say in good old Montreal and good old Quebec, c'était n'importe quoi. It was. It was. N'importe quoi. So we um we start off. It's Madden, Shivani, Hudson once again on commentary. They're solid here. They're not the problem with this show. They actually try to make sense of the crazy-ass storylines that will yes. proceed in the next two hours. Yes. And they kind and of look like idiots for trying to do that, but that's their job. That's and their me, job. done commentary, sometimes, dude, you're like, what am I saying? But if you don't say that, then the wrestlers look like idiots, and your job is to make them look good. So if you have to make yourself look like an idiot, 
so they don't look like an idiot, that's your job. Absolutely. So you have to so, pretend like, oh my God, sometimes. Anyway, that's, that's a really good point. Yeah, that you made because you job, did man. comment, and you can tell it's sometimes cringeworthy. Uh, but you know, <laughs> they're such class acts, and uh, they are they're so professional, man. That they, you know, you forget that split second. Oh, what the hell just happened? And then you forget because they stay so professional, even if they look like clowns. Uh, you know, they're taking a hit for the team, and they try to, uh, add to be some honest, logic. Try absolutely, to absolutely legendary lineup of commentators. By the way, yeah, in man. my opinion, agree. So. Back in the day, this is one thing. I definitely, in these days, like modern day 2022 now, whenever a show's on TV, if I watch AEW or Raw or whatever, I really am conscious of what city it's in. But back in the day, I remember really not caring at all what city it was in. But I remember you would notice that more and you would mention it to me more. But I did. Uh, I always had, um, you know, I was always curious with cities, uh, starting with hockey, because, you know, it would always be at a, at a, a different city and stuff. So whenever I'd see a show on wrestling, the first thing I'd look at would be the date. And I'd be like, whoa. So, um, you know, they, they're already going to have storylines pertaining to this. I was young. So th that's why I was so infatuated until this day, too, um, when I see events for boxing and stuff so um but it was always interesting for wrestling because uh, there are some cities that barely saw shows yeah so. that's it exactly like here this has definitely got to be the one and only nitro ever from kitchener ontario exactly i don't know why they didn't go to toronto ottawa there's bigger cities in in ontario but hey kitchener i'm sure the fans in attendance will remember this one forever for sure, because it was super random. Uh, like, we were huge WCW fans in Canada. Like, WCW, as you know, in the States had the, the biggest fan base, right? But we, we were yeah, still big yeah, wrestling so. fans here in Canada. It would sell, but, you know, we didn't have enough shows here. Um, so it was always just fun to see. But you, we'd realize it was all in, in the South, uh, mostly in the Mid-South, um, the States. So it, it was fun to have shows here, honestly. Yeah. WWF came more. At the time. Yeah, WWF dominated Canada. They even had like uh, shows dedicated just to Canada on TV and stuff. But um, I think with the Vancouver New Blood Rising show we did before and this show, I think they might have been banking on Brett being on the roster at this point when they did yes. these shows. Yes, absolutely. You know, that makes a great point because um, they did it make an effort to come to Canada. Come on, we had Mayhem 99 that when they, you know, got him to... It was all about Brett. It was Brett, man, the beating huge names, Sting and Benoit. Uh, it was just uh, iconic uh, for him to win the title, even though 99 was really not solid, but they did bank a lot on Brett because they did a major um, uh, effort to come to Canada. So yeah. we got actually a few shows and pay-per-views mixed in together in a span of a year in at Canada. At the end. At the end of WCW. At the end. Yeah. They realized finally at the end, they're like, oh, hey, wait, we have Bret Hart, one of the be like one of the most legendary and biggest names in wrestling, right? He was still fresh, man. It was still 99. Oh, yeah. He was, was like a top five big name in the, in the, big in time. the business at the time. It was also not too long after the screw job. Like, it was, we're talking two, three years. Now we're in 2022, so it seems like he, uh, yeah. half a century ago for but sure. But the screw job was such a big event that it was massive. still relevant it was massive still relevant. massively relevant yeah people were still talking about it all the time so brett not being a roster member here i mean i guess that kind of hurts it they've tried to book that in consequence so like the fact that it's in canada doesn't really play in much into the storyline of the show here but it's a good crowd anyways, you know. It is, it is. The energy is always good in Canada. We are huge wrestling fans. Um, so, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Good I energy. In, those era, in that era, they would have came uh, to Montreal. Maybe we uh, could have. Absolutely. Gone, for sure. They came once only to Montreal. Years before, though. For a house show. For a house show. A for a house show. And Rougeau, I was there. The only time they ever came to Montreal. Um, maybe also it could have been due to the, 
maybe uh, TSN had good ratings and they wanted to capitalize on that by doing shows in Canada. We don't yeah, know I think exactly. I think yeah, you know, it was it was weird at that time because you only had TSN and RDS, right? So these yeah. were the two only ones, but and RDS for sure they had. Was to... like TSN. It was the same. It thing. was in French, the same thing, just in French. So and they had the same content, so you could watch Nitro and Raw and uh, and, and recaps. They had recap exactly. shows as well. Yeah. So the first match of the show, the actual show, is actually a continuation from the pay-per-view the night before at Fall Brawl when uh, Orndorff got injured, which was like a, sad to say, a cringe moment. Like, I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, like, it literally- No, we love Mr. Wonderful, watch. but it was really cringy, yeah, man. So it's, it's such a, like, that being said, it makes sense to continue the match on Nitro, but it was an elimination match and he got injured at an awkward time. So this match ends up being an elimination match between Tigris and Rey Mysterio, the only two members of their team, against Stasiak, Palumbo, Sanders, O'Hare, and Jindrak in an elimination. Five on two. One team is Rey with a girl who was a Nitro girl about six months before against five... Jumbo. Yeah, wrestlers like big heavyweight beasts straight out of the power plant so as much as i love ray and as much as i goddamn love ray mysterio and i'm pissed that wwe rescheduled that december 30 show and when they come back they better have ray he was still not credible i'm sorry it made no sense I don't care how much I love Ray. There's no way that he would have any chance. The Filthy Animals should have gotten wiped off the map at the beginning of this match. What do you think? Exactly. Absolutely. Because you had, man, come on, fresh from the power plant, massive, big. <laughs> I, I honestly, it, I'll be honest, the match was a bit cartoony. I don't know if you felt that. With oh, the yeah, pins all over like the place. The credibility is out of um, it. It was so cartoony, okay. man. And. Out of the five natural born thrillers, to make it even less credible, Tigris eliminates four out of the five. That, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, that, I she mean, even I, gets I, the win for the team. Ray gets pinned, and she's the sole survivor of the team on top of it. It was brutal, man. It was abuse, like, honestly. Like, why? I why have do no idea. all of this? For that, to to make her look good, she's not even a wrestler. Tigress, no I sense. think, absolutely. I think it was more of the you know because she was good looking and they were pushing that off. Remember we had we were discussing yeah. that, yeah, absolutely. Because it's not credible. Come on, man! Like people were flipping the channel uh, to, to 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 the other wrestling company like, watching why that. Why have all this drawn out elimination match to make a girl? Be put over on these guys. The girl's not even competing for the women's title, which, in case you weren't aware, didn't even exist. There was no WCW women's champion. And she's not even going to probably be wrestling for, like, the next two months before they throw her in another tag match like this. Exactly. And not only that, it made the thrillers look like big goofs than usual. So... Uh, yeah, this, this continuation, I, you know, like, uh, I love the filthy animals, uh, and uh, everything, but I, I didn't think this was, uh, it just started off horribly. So I'm rating this F for sure. Yeah. It's starting uh, off like, on a bad note. Exactly. There was some good, maybe some good parts in the match with Ray, but I mean, overall it was garbage. Ray's a great wrestler. And so were the, were, were the natural born killers, the newbies, as we'd say, uh, I mean, Tigress, yeah, she's good looking and everything, but had no business, you know, uh, going that Hitting far. Four of them, winning the match. Ray. Again, I think this was probably just, uh, you know, um, written right 20 minutes before the show opened. It... Yeah, definitely. Because there's no logic to it whatsoever. <laughs> nah, so honestly. then we go backstage to of course, who we're going to see a lot, unfortunately, Kevin Nash. And Big he's sexy. hanging out with random security guards backstage 
And he's telling them that the natural Bruin thrillers are just brutal. And they need a coach. And that they need a coach. He, brutal and need a coach. Guidance. Yeah. So then that we're going to, it's a very short segment, but it's kind of uh, important. And then, um, we then also, we, also Prez, also just to add on something, um, yeah. he doesn't even mention that he, you know, lost uh, the potential, the title the night before. Because again, yeah, like, yeah hey, he shows that he doesn't give a heck about the belt that he wears around his waist. Which is classic 1999-2000 Kevin Nash. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, yeah. Half the storylines from the night before, they're kind of like whatever. Some aren't. Like, the first match is continuing. It. Some matches are. But yeah, Nash, it's like he's wiped the slate clean from losing to Booker T the night before. And for now, and... And yeah, now he wants to be the coach of the Natural Born Thrillers, which I think he might have politic backstage to do that so that he could just have a talking role and that he could continue his lazy ways and just collect those fat paychecks. Of course, he was... Come on, man. It's Kevin Nash, one of the founders of the NWO. He carried, you know, the company at that time with... You know, Hogan and, and Nash and Six and Ted DiBiase. So for sure he had that power just collecting it. So you're absolutely right when you say he snuck his way in because he was even booking matches. Exactly. He was booking pay-per-views. He was he's like, it's okay tonight. It's relaxed. I don't even have to wear my attire. I'll just wear my jersey, my jeans. By the way, after he even spells out his game plan on the board, it ends up, it ends up saying, you suck. So yeah, it was funny that Joe the thrillers explains yeah. them their game plan and then spells out "you suck" on the chalkboard. I hate this chalkboard gimmick. Absolutely, it's, it's kind of like first time he does it, but it's one of the first times, and he keeps doing it later on. He does this gimmick for like a couple months, where like he's like the X is here, the other X is here, the other X is here. So why you? And then it ends up spelling out a word. Like, such come a, on, man. Such a Futurama merged with the Mighty Ducks movies featuring and starring Emilio Estevez type. Uh, yeah, pretty cheesy. Come on, Nash, man. You're big sexy. Exactly, exactly. And, like, in the crowd, the different shots that you see of the, of the crowd, some of them, you could see there's some empty seats, but it's still a pretty good crowd. It is, definitely. a good crowd. For sure. And they're pretty hot. Um, at one point here, we've only had one match. It starts going very backstage heavy on the show. We see a highlight package from Nash and Booker from the cage match the night before at Fall Brawl. Um, then we see Russo. Steiner. He comes out of Goldberg's dressing room. Uh... And he's doing Goldberg's entrance. Like he's mocking Goldberg. Um, using Goldberg's music and all that. He's talking trash the whole way down. He's wearing a Goldberg like cut off t-shirt. Um, he looks pretty ridiculous. But what's funny is that I guess there is no like uh, screens in the arena showing the live uh, feed. Because... They see the Goldberg fireworks go off in the arena and they think it's him, but the people watching on TV know it's Russo and not Goldberg. So they give Russo this big pop and then they realize it's him and they're like, oh, fuck you. Yeah, that's pulled off properly live. Uh, us seeing it, we knew, you You know, we were, we were just like, oh, man. But uh, I, yeah, I must imagine you're there and then you hear the, the team hit and, you know, the lights, the pyros, and then you realize it's Russo. So they invest that big pop into this heel uh, Megalodon-like uh, boss figure. And he was yeah. getting very mouthy. He was super mouthy. Like, he was trying to bring the new attitude. Like, you know, he was all about the attitude era. Yeah. He was trying to oomph it in WCW, bringing that from the... But again, with the quality shows, this is another episode we're going to... Definitely. One thing for sure is that on the pay-per-views we reviewed, there wasn't much Russo... 
But on this show, this is the first time we see him, and it will not be the last. There is a lot of Russo on this show. He's like, he's like uh, all over the show. He calls Kitchener Kirshner at one point, which is uh, Corporal Kirshner. I don't know if he says that as a joke or as a mistake. He doesn't know what city he's in. He mis maybe he mispronounced them because I have watched his podcast before, and the guy is known for mispronouncing things. So we don't know. Anyway, Russo reads. This is where the show starts getting well. No, the chalkboard started getting ridiculous in my opinion. It keeps on with the ridiculousness as he reads a letter that he says he receives from Goldberg. He says. Goldberg in the letter apparently says he's not worthy of working for WCW anymore, so he's quitting. It says other ridiculous stuff like, Mr. Russo, you're my god. Thank you for the time in WCW. Like, what's the point of writing a fake letter saying he quit when, like, obviously that's not true. So it's over the top, exactly. Is Goldberg has failed the fans over and over. Total disgrace, a loser. Therefore, he does resign from WCW. Classic, just BS, honestly. Like, what a weird thing to do, to be honest. It's, we're talking about Goldberg. We're talking about big boys here. And then we have this little letter that's super corporal. I, you know, even then seeing that, I remember seeing that. I was just like, what's going on? Like, why is everything... You know, like, what are these storylines? It's just going out. It's going nowhere. Kind of like the multiverse. Absolutely. Jeez. Yeah, Goldberg. So then the segment gets a little bit better because uh, Russo brings out Scott Steiner. And uh, Steiner comes out with Medeja. He's huge here. Like, I think Steiner's arms were bigger than Goldberg's at this point. He calls Goldberg a, a bald punk, and he says he wants the world title. He says it's um, it, it should be his. It's his time. It's a classic Steiner promo. I don't like that he's associated with Russo, but... Yeah, I hated that, too, because he was, to me, he was threatening, man. Steiner, I, you know, I always had Goldberg as Superman. And then you had Steiner coming in, defeating him. This was his time, and he and he was a physical specimen too. It's not like, uh, you know, he was Hogan or um, other wrestlers. It was he was a beast, to be honest, and he was a great wrestler. Yeah. So then they're talking about how Steiner um, should be getting a world title shot soon, but then Jeff Jarrett comes out, and instead of calling them slap nuts, I just want to. Mention he calls them slap asses here for some reason. Slap asses. <laughs> and basically says he wants a title shot. Kevin Nash, unfortunately, is back out here. Of course, he wants a title shot. But he might have a better argument because he does deserve a rematch because he lost the belt the night before. Ex-champ. Anyways, Russo says later on the night, there's going to be a tag match. And the one who gets the fall will get a title shot on Nitro the next week. Which is like a weird stipulation. You know, it's a tag match. Very odd. It would be like a fatal four-way. Exactly. You know where they use that too as well, by the way? In Bash the Beach 1999. You remember the main event? It was a tag team match and whoever pinned who wins... Exactly. Whoever won, won the title. Whoever did the pinfall. So they always weird, weird, they used weird stipulations like that. Yeah, I don't think it really, I don't think that the ratings would have gone up. Anyone hearing that like, oh, wow, you know, I really don't think so. But hey, they always had to put out new shit every week. They had to put out new main events every week. So like, No choice with what they had, exactly. Yeah. So... Um, Russo ends up taking Jeff Jarrett's place. Is that right? No. Yes. Well, actually, 
he says that there's going to be this match. And so he goes Jarrett and Steiner. They're a team. And the other exactly. team is Nash and, and himself. Russo. And as you see to Nash's look of dismay, he looked like Super Shredder there, like confused. Yeah. <laughs> Super Shredder. Um, and yeah, so there's your main event. You have good old JJ and Scott Steiner versus Kevin Nash. And not only uh, man himself, Vince Russo. That's right. So I think this might have been a, it's not his first time wrestling, but it's one of his first times wrestling. It's definitely one of the first times Russo has a chance to become WCW champion. It's so his then, dream after all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He says it's his dream and they're all like, what the hell? And then backstage, Nash, Steiner, and Jared are all talking. They're all collectively pissed that Russo is in the match. It's a weird segment. So then, finally, that whole segment is over. We're going to move on to something, a new segment, finally, some new wrestlers. And we have Shane Douglas and Tori Wilson come out. We see a recap of the crazy scaffold match from the night before. And then we get a great, uh, a great promo. I would say the franchise and Tori are a, a highlight of WCW at this era. Yep. Like, whatever Douglas is thrown at him, he'll put a promo that still gets a good reaction, and he'll put on a good match anyways. He always makes the best of it. What do you think? Absolutely. Douglas at this time, I really didn't like him, but that's because he did his job well. Uh, looking yeah, back at him now, he was a fine wrestler. Absolutely. His promos, uh, he was his creativity was good. Uh, so I actually did. He, To be honest, I do agree with you. He was a highlight because they had the hush-hush storylines, even though they were ridiculous. And they were go really going, um, you know, attitude mature era. So definitely Shane Douglas and the Kidman. It, this was just fresh off uh, his match with Kidman, the uh, Pittsburgh plunge. Uh, but definitely uh, Douglas was uh, a asset to WCW. He was right. underused, I find actually uh like he feuded you know they were trying to push kidman and stuff which was great i like that feud but um they kind of underused them because shane never Douglas gave him a chance to go like for uh, all out man show. absolutely like i could have seen him um you know main eventing maybe with steiner booker t yeah definitely you know, great and great he been, uh, quality good enough on the mic to definitely carry his end of the stick there absolutely so they challenge any couple backstage because they say that they're the best couple in wrestling because they won the scaffold match before, the night before. So Kwee and Paisley come out, and it's a quick match. Uh, Shane Douglas hits his finisher on Paisley, though, for the win to get some extra heat. He hits his finisher on the woman. Um, one thing... That is pretty ridiculous, though, is that, like, this is our second match, and it's already, like, the only two matches we've had so far have been some kind of mixed tag match. Yeah, they were big on that for some reason. It was always, like, a heel hurting a woman. Like, we've seen this in the WWE you know, WWF, but they were, like, really showering that. Like, as you'd say, in this event, this is a second, um, you know. The second match. We've only had two <laughs> matches. Both matches are, like, kind of the same. Already, exactly. So, I mean, yeah, it was just, they, they, I think it was just, they were trying to go, you know, intergender um, more. Yeah, they were focusing I don't know, more. But uh, I don't think it really works here. Like, the pacing of the show is definitely off here. We it's broken. Any really good wrestling matches, like, as exactly. good as Douglas is, this match isn't that good at all. Exactly. The promo's good. Not his so, fault, because the show was put shittily together. So it was just, like, thrown. Everyone was thrown. They're like, okay, uh, well, I don't know. What are you going to do for finisher here? Like, I, you know. The quality of the pay-per-views we watched, looking back on it, I thought they would be worse but they were actually better. This is as bad as people remember WCW at this point. 
you know i think it was uh i think it's because just everyone just didn't care man they didn't put no effort because it gradually got worse from there like you because couldn't we're gonna be reviewing it's it it just so bad because they the just lost hope pretty much i'm losing hope here because the Talking next about this. Yeah. segment kevin nash once again is with russo Backstage and oh my God. at the goddamn chalkboard. Oh my God. And he spells out bite me this time. Like rips off Rick Steiner. It's like you suck. This time it's like bite me. Like this was like a The Simpsons Futurama type joke, you know, that you'd see on the cartoon. That might have yes. worked once, not yes. to like keep doing it every week. Booker T and Sting are backstage face to face. They're talking about their match later tonight because Sting at the pay-per-view the night before became the number one contender and Booker T won the title. So they have a big match tonight. Sting versus Booker T. It escalates and they end up brawling. They start the promo the back. as friends and they end up brawling. Got a little too heated down. With these two backstage, uh, which was always, you know, anytime you saw professionals like Sting and, and Booker T, it, it was always a pleasure. Like, the, the, I think, you know, when I see these two, I was comforted. I was like, okay, so I'm actually watching the show for a reason. This is why I'm watching it, not for whatever was thrown on before, like an old shaddy uh, pants and, and shirt from your closet. As oh, yeah. They would Definitely, put the show in, you know. Like, just. Definitely the Sting Booker T. Match is something to look forward to on this. Exactly, show. that's the only thing. <laughs> yeah, this was probably the best segment up to this point, and I like how they brawl because I didn't expect them to start brawling. Yeah, they were uh, they were chummy, chummy, and they were just yeah. out of nowhere. So we're like, oh man, what's going on now? Like, yo, know, this this the storyline's all over the place. Everyone wants to kill each other, you know. Like, uh, so it just you know, it's all over the place for sure. Even going more all over the place, the next segment stays backstage. It's Disco Inferno, and he has an inflatable duck called the Disco Duck with him. He goes oh, the into the duck. cat's office. The cat is a, the commissioner at the time. He tells the cat that the cat sucks as a commissioner, and then the cat puts up his commissionership as if it's like the Intercontinental title or something. Yeah, he puts that on up as a stipulation against Disco, and Disco puts up Ray and Hoovy's tag titles on the line. How does that make sense as a stipulation? And that's going to be a match later on that night. Again, what smells of stipulation is smells of Russo, and again, they always made up these weird stipulations and by the way the the goose duck thing was i you know we probably thought it was funny in 2000 because we were high schoolers we're like, <laughs> like, uh, duck, like, uh, like a duck that a loser put, front yeah, like, put a front line bro but um you know, just looking back at this this was absolutely horrendous man and again just uh hey i'm you know gonna trade my uh commissionership on the line just like it was some old socks we're gonna trade with you know just come on yeah, I really Nothing hate it when they that. it's not the first time. Well, it might have been the first time, but it's not the last time where they defend the commissionership as if it was a title at this point. Yeah, prestigious or something. Like that which, makes no know, sense. Man. Like so. at that point, why doesn't why didn't Goldberg challenge uh, the cat to become commissioner and then like he could just book himself all the time as champion, and he's good enough to, like, win the matches anyway. Exactly, man. You should just pull what Nash does before he goes to Nitros. Why didn't but, Nash uh... become commissioner? That would <laughs> more realistic. He did. He did. He powerbombed Terry Funk for that. Uh, oh, yeah. But that's exactly. Not, uh, yeah, Maybe absolutely. we'll get to that point. He, one day. So then, again, we stay backstage. We haven't seen the ring in, like, 20 minutes so on this show. Backstage... Booker T is frustrated and destroys the locker room. Again, we cut backstage. Filthy animals are pissed at Disco. And he comes out finally for his match. The cat bans the filthy animals from ringside, however. So it's Disco against the cat one-on-one. -on -one, 
And the cat wins in about 30 seconds. Big 30 seconds. Uh, and then I mean, the animals are pissed at Disco. I don't remember they, if they fire him. And, but no, yeah, they, they run him off. They run Disco off, man. And this is the end of Disco and the filthy animal era. It was just right there. And then we cut to Nash, who uh, says he's out of the tag match, so Steiner and Jared can work it out themselves. So this is alarming because now your main event has changed. He probably got lazy. He's like, Russo, man, I want to go home, and I got to go grab a bag of Lay's uh, before uh, the store closes. Yeah. So he just doesn't participate. So now we're left thinking what's going to go down back to disco balls yeah so now russo has no partner and nash is just like whatever even though we've seen him for like 20 minutes of the show already he's just like screw it here we go getting to another <laughs> convoluted part of the show like there's like so many okay i'll just start with it a guy I have a great memory for wrestling, but I do not remember ever seeing Am I Smooth at all oh. in WCW. Am I Smooth, to be honest, was just... Am I Smooth was just random. He was to like, me. I think on Saturday night, in regular tights, and then here, they're like, okay, we're going to try to give this guy a gimmick. He was, remember what we were talking about, what was popular on shows these days? Limos. Am I smooth? They gave him the Big limo time. driver gimmick. Okay. Big time, it's true. So he's out in the ring, and the night before, remember, David Flair is going insane about who Stacey Keebler's uh, baby daddy's going to be, who impregnated her. And he put the figure four on the mailman. The mailman, bro. Now we got a limo driver saying that he knows who the father of David Flair's kid is, his illegitimate child. So David Flair just jets to the ring with a crowbar. Smooth has a VHS tape in a bag. Two, year 2000, we were still rocking the VHS. It was. So DVD hasn't. Weird. No, it, was it wasn't. Normal. It was natural to us. Now, if you show it, people think it's ancient. So he says that Kidman left this VHS in his limo, and that the VHS reveals who David Flair's father is, of the kid, not who David Flair's father is. We know that's Ric Flair, and <laughs> Flair gives him money and gets the tape. And then he says, fuck it. And, and he, beats. Hits, he hits M.I. Smooth with the crowbar. But like, one small detail. Why doesn't he take his money back? He just runs away. He might as well just take his money back. He knocks him out and runs away with the tape. Keeps his money there. I would have I took my money back and maybe went, you know, in M.I.'s pockets and got whatever yeah, was he, in there too. And just, you know, th th this is a, a signature of when you knock someone out. You take your money he back, then you run. But David Flair just had so much money from Daddy Rick. Uh, but, I mean, you know, uh, pretty funny. It was so cheesy. Uh, David Flair, though, did scare me for a bit. He was insane looking. They really colored his eyes dark. You know, he looked like Kane under his mask. Uh, you know, the yeah. black makeup. That's how bad to he looked. Look like a, You're trying to make look like a too. psycho, man. He looked like Carnage, kind of. Cletus Cassidy. Uh, dark eyes. But um, <laughs> uh, M.I. Smooth gets beat down. Uh, and then we cut to Russo. Yeah. Again, who's just there um, taking power trip. Uh, he's just chronic. At one point, Mike Sanders is told to go see Russo and Sander by Terry Taylor. <laughs> Terry and Taylor. Sanders is given a tape by Russo to go give to Chronic. To Chronic. But this is not a VHS tape. This is an audio tape. So as we described this, we're going to have to try to keep those in mind because they have two storylines simultaneously going on during the same episode of Nitro with tapes. You have the tapes. audio tape, 
with and then you have the Sanders f- and Russo, and you have the video VHS tape with David Flair. So they're taking the tape, um, you know, storyline. I, I think they thought it was cool in 2000, like tape, you know, like uh, or footage. I recorded you, you, you know, like, Haha, like hey, you. you know, like this is high, like we're high quality, you know, like we're super, uh, you know, it, it was just tr- modern, you know, I think it was reality TV type. I mean, at the time. Survivor you had, you had those shows just, you know, exploding. Uh, th- th- I think that made sense. They were just yeah, like WCW ripped like, everyone oh, off. Like, yeah, man. Uh, I didn't think of mold. that. Now there was this the mole, the mole that's legendary, man. You would just finish school and then at night they play the mole. One of the Bro. first reality shows. Two thousand. That's truly that. And Survivor. These guys are the kings. These guys are the origin. Yeah, man. There was a lot of reality. So I can understand now what they were trying to, like, to do. Fit in with like the pop culture at the time, definitely. There was even, like, other, like, I'll just, like, name a random movie from that time. Like, remember the movie from year 2000, Josie and the Pussycats? Of course, Josie and the Pussycats, the band. That movie was kind of about, like, I want, there was a tape and the band. Like, yeah, they had standard. to get it. Absolutely. Uh, even uh, in that, that well, we were talking about Road Trip yesterday. We laughed. Even Road Trip, the video. The videotape. The but that was a great movie, it. yeah. But th- that was a great movie, actually. You know, they pulled it off. But like, they were just, you know, you know, WCW. They ripped everything off from movies to music to comics to whatever to other companies. It was just a satire, maybe. I think this is what it they were feels trying more to more like a satire than a satire, else man. Like Honestly, it's like you can tell because it, nothing had like they didn't even map the shows out. They just stopped trying. Why not save one of these <laughs> storylines for the week after, if anything? Seriously. Hey, come Maybe on, David East. going to get confused. Absolutely. Back to tapes, just to say David was making a guy play the tape because he couldn't go buy a VCR. It was just like, I'm not yeah, going to buy a VCR. I'm going to force you into taping something. Yeah, uh, he's running tape. around the arena trying to find someone who has a VCR. He goes to the production truck, and the guy refuses to play his tape, so he knocks him out. He knocks him out. Probably, you know, David Flair, the way he looked, he probably had a gun on him, too. He's like, hey, play this. I'm going to shoot you he right now. He looks like he would have, like... He would, like man. They were trying to go to that Yeah, direction. he was a crazy. I, I like David then. He was a good heel to me, you know, and it was uh, Ric Flair, so it passed to his son. So it passed to me, you know. I was like, man, legendary. Okay. He's probably going to... Well, let's just compare. No. <laughs> when yeah. you go to the production truck here... Yeah. Compared to in 97, with... <clears throat> When the NWO invade the production truck and spray paint NWO on the side, what felt more real? I mean, yeah, I would look. I like think the quality of the show had dropped so much from ninety seven. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. They had vignettes in ninety seven. I just, I'm flabbergasted because look at it now. Like it was just so. It felt so bad. cutting edge in 97. You know, it was cutting edge in 97. They were innovative, man. It was, this was the first time you saw this in pro wrestling. It was just like professional vignettes. They had Rodman thrown in. We were, it was crazy at the time. Jay man. Leno. And we're like, Jay Leno, bro, is NBA, like 96, 97 was a peak time. Rodman um, was a huge name. He was huge, so but they kept signing him in 1999. That yep. was just crazy, like 99. Like you know, Rodman was having problems. He was doing cheap movies like Knock Off, starring JCVD, classic BK classic video, VHS Re- rental, movie. classic VHS guys. Uh, a lot of you guys, if you're if you're listening out, if you remember BK video on Victoria, hey. this was the pinnacle of the South Shore. That's where we would rent all um, our wrestling, our video games, uh, good old SNES and popcorn smell like fresh plastic popcorn and candy bar uh packaging just That's beautiful right. era that was pretty cool i loved it when we uh started to become friends we realized that we rented vhs's from the same vhs store and we i'd be like hey man i rented mayhem 1999 you'd be like me too and I'd be like, hey, uh, they had SummerSlam 93, 94, and we'd laugh because we're like, man, can you get other SummerSlams? Like, you know, like, they never updated wrestling. That was heartbreaking. The sections. They buy, like, the last 12? tapes they bought at that store. Was 99, I think, for for WCW specifically, yeah, BK Video. Yeah, 99, I think, might have been the last event they bought. For WCW, I think even wrestling, man. 
Yeah. It was yeah, sad. They, would add ran- they even had like uh, Starcade 86 there, I think. Like they had like, <laughs> old tapes, man. Hey, Nikita Koloff. Yeah. It had a scaffold match. We, it had the scaffold match. We can review that because it is, it was in WCW technically. Uh, it's the pre. This was the WCW. birth. It was close. Yeah, it was close to the birth of WCW. Like yeah. it was a bit after for sure. We and might have is, to review that one one day. But good quality wrestling, by the way. Great talent time was real. At they were real time, wrestlers. Yeah, it was. They had a great roster. They did. That was right after they bought uh, Bill Watts Mid South Territory. So yes. even on that show, it's a little bit confusing because there's not only the NWA traditional titles that we know from WCW that went on, but you still had the UWF titles. So there's like a ton of titles defended on that show. It feels like what is going on here? For sure. And uh, coming sure from Dr. the... Dr. Death defends the UWF title on that. Absolutely. Coming from the master and uh, the dictionary of an encyclopedia. The Prez, absolutely. You uh, actually, this summer, were watching a lot of uh, that era, if I remember. And then you got oh, yeah. me hooked on Nitro 1995, which we will review. Nitro 1995 is probably, and this is another For episode because sure. it's, yeah, because five years, man, 95 to 2000, just to see the quality. I don't know if the times changed the millennium. It was just lazy and people starting to cut corners in, in, in the millennium. And I it think. Really- Nitro at the beginning really felt fresh. By this time, it really felt almost like a second-rate product. It was worn out, and you know, you were like, "What's gonna happen tonight?" Like, yeah, some random stuff's gonna happen, but like, you just didn't know what and yeah, what to expect. Yeah, some bullshit with some VHSs or some audio. Uh, so tapes. sad, so sad, press. In those days, just to clarify, audio tapes people would call them cassettes. I don't even think people, if you would go up to a teenager today and say, like, what's a cassette? They would think it's some type of tape, maybe, but they might not even know what you're talking about. They're like floppy disks for those really old computers of yeah. yours. And you're like, no, uh, yeah. VHS, man, you had to rewind that because if you didn't rewind it and you rented something, you'd have to pay a fee of, uh, I think, $2. They would put that on your account. That's and then they nice. wouldn't let you rent more wrestling tapes like uh, SummerSlam 1995 and Royal Rumble 1996. Um, Rumble 92, they definitely yeah, had there. Absolutely. And uh, it's 92. <laughs> I mean, I think it's on YouTube now for free. You can, like, even WWE yeah. put it up. But which was one of the best. I'm not even, we're not mocking this. One of the best Royal Rumbles. It was. Rick Flair. Rick, Rick Flair. Rick Flair. Scott Steiner. By the way, Scott Steiner getting suspended in this era and on these nitros was like you in, in, in high school. In like high you were school. Scott Steiner when it came to suspensions. Because you, <laughs> when they gave you the mic, never, you know, you were, you were quite the promo. At school, man. At school, you had good promos, good presentations, Prez. That definitely, you can tell that you were definitely a commentator of some sort, uh, you know, a screenwriter maybe, uh, uh, things like that, you know, like writing stories and, and, and um, you know, for sure. Yeah, and at the beginning of high school, I, by the end, I tried to, well, I actually just found out how to not get caught, but I was always getting in trouble. I was actually kind of scared I was going to get kicked out of school. No, but you were a lot of yeah. kids out of our school at the time too. Yeah, yeah, for sure and they were. They were on now. a rampage, man. They were on a rampage. They were like, uh, man, they were like USADA on UFC fighters. Now there was this <laughs> other time. school near our school called the Alternate School, which was which was where they would send the kids that they kicked out of our school. Yeah, and they looked like they had a mandate to fill that place up at one point. They would kick. They were kicking kids out of our school left and right. Yeah, and the punishment there was pretty brutal. They would lock you in a room. They're like, you're locked. Oh, I'm so glad that I never had to go there. They're like, Nails is going to come out and beat on yeah. you. <laughs> and then he's going to assault the okay. boss. <laughs> Here, before we... We'll get back into the show, but I just want to make one thing clear about how crazy our high school was, is that um, at one point, there was this... I don't know what his job exactly was. He was some kind of monitor or something at the school. He was this big dude called Mike, okay? And he told me that he worked at a juvenile corrections place, and he told me that if I ever got sent there, I was going to get raped. Oh, my God. He really told me that if I didn't stop smoking pot, that I was going to go to juvie, 
And he said, when I would go there, he's like, you're going to get raped. I really basically got threatened that I was going to get raped at high school by some fucking authority figure. John, that was disturbing. It was the 2000s. They were allowed to say there was no filter that and it was like it, today you would get destroyed and canceled and murdered if you did that. Right. If you talked like that. If someone told uh, that to a kid. It passes in the 2000s because that shit was exploding everywhere in our songs. And, and it was normal. You know, like we literally went from the 90s to like 2000s. Like this is DX world like suck it and uh, just it, it, and fucking, but uh, you kept Ogrish. smoking com and yeah ogrish.com and then faces of death Strange i think land. later strange land and weird we stuff like that real quick absolutely but uh, funny to say um big mike also was a bodyguard for ken shamrock yeah he was a bodyguard this guy he told and... us he would buy him cocaine, and we were like, what? Ken Shamrock, UFC legend, and WWF intercontinental legend, and he had he was a great wrestler in 98, man. They he needed was. Shamrock. Uh, 97, too, he came in, but Shamrock was a great wrestler. Yeah, uh, not that a... guy literally told us that he, because he was a huge guy. He was like 300 pounds. Yeah, he was he a was bouncer a looking guy. bodyguard, and when WWF would come to town, he said he would be bodyguard for them, which I actually believe. He said he met them all, but he said the most piece of shit one was Ken Shamrock. Ken Shamrock. And he said Ken Shamrock, when he would come to town, all he'd want to do was cheat on his wife and do coke. That's, Why would he tell uh, yeah. that to 14-year-olds? Yeah, we know. were disturbed. Like, we, you know, <laughs> like, you can have that convo with 18-year-olds. You know, 18-year-olds, they're more mature. But, man, you're talking the peak of, like, you're becoming, you know, you're a and teenager. This, is that, this guy's job. Like, this is his job. Be a monitor. That's something you tell your friends. For sure. But you know what? Big Mike was straight. Like, he, he was straight like up. He would say it like he would say it like it is, and he's scared. Yeah, absolutely. Because I remember you Maybe telling me this and scarring me. Maybe you know, he, you he did a good job. He, he did. You kept you kept smoking weed. You didn't stop, but you made damn sure that you got out of jail and you never went there without getting raped. So good job. Good on to you. Uh, you. We should ever like run into him. And say, Mike, I listened to your advice, dude. I didn't get raped. Um, My I didn't get raped. <laughs> and you know, I still smoke weed. Yeah, but I didn't get raped. Around, so it's all good. You know. <laughs> yeah, man. So finally, we get a normal one on one match. And it's the only advertised match from that was like we knew going into the show Booker T versus Sting for the world title. Only quality it's probably match. Like the only good part of the show. Man, come on. You had the two veterans and the two uh, seasoned. Uh, you know, franchise, you know, Booker T was, they were pushing him then and he was credible, man. He was the rock of WCW. I almost so. like this match. Well, I do like this match more even than the main event of the pay-per-view the night before. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. They, they always did that. Like it'd be one match that was better than what they had last week on the pay-per-view, you know, like at Nitro. It was so random because, you know, Nitro was just not a good product, but they always snuck in like a good match that yeah, was like kind of like meant to hey, be on the pay-per-view look, man why did you throw all that crap yeah even on the a broken view. clock is right twice a day you know what i mean you know exactly <laughs> pressing it like it is man unfortunately jared interferes though like it the match is going really good up to this point jared interferes but that's to be expected at this point i fucking hated jeff jared me too. I really, really, I, I honestly disliked him. I was like, and I knew at that time I was like, why are they pushing this piece of shit? Double JJ. Why don't like he? Why doesn't he grow his hair back? Champion in WWE. Exactly. Like grow your hair back, dude, and go back to WWE with the roadie. And I don't know, man, what you do there. And then <laughs> Steiner also comes out. Jarrett hits Sting with a guitar, and the heels hit their finishers. So, it, there's no conclusive winner to this one, unfortunately. But it's, it's still the highlight of the show. I mean... Yeah, for sure. It feels like it's somewhere along the line. Someone forgot this was a wrestling show. There's so much storyline build up. Just getting shot in your face. Yeah, and each storyline had like two storylines. It was just like well, multiplication. Like what's so funny is that WCW was so much backstage crap at this time. And what was their video game that they put out? 
called. Oh my God, WCW Backstage Assault, one of the most horrendous pieces. <laughs> and I was so, I was so depressed when I rented it. I, Johnny, I rented it from Spec Club International down the street on Provence, uh, next to Samari. Uh, uh, the nice the and wonderful P section of Brossard, yeah, good old P section in the heart of Brooklyn, back in New York. The day, it was an affordable family neighborhood. If you look at the real estate now, a it's house is extremely nothing expensive. under a million dollars in Brossard. Exactly, nowadays. it's it's disgustingly it's, it's disgustingly absurd at the moment. And uh, in man, the year yeah. two thousand, I was hanging out in the P section. Sometimes I knew that was a great. A great neighborhood, man. I have a lot of good memories of Brossard back then. Absolutely. We uh, swam in Cedric's pool. You gave me a choke slam off the wooden boards. It was always fun, man, to do moves. It was just great. <laughs> we Because we were aspiring to become wrestlers probably one day. We're like, hey, let's just try to practice anywhere we can and, you know, get some good moves Without on. Without getting them. hurt, though. Without we getting hurt. Down. That was no that was the most hurt. important, for sure, for sure. We were a bit careless, but we were, I think, still careful because we were seasoned when it came to wrestling. Like... When I started training to go into wrestling, like I thought that um, the moves that we did, like while doing backyard wrestling, like I was like, okay, well, I guess that hurts a bit because, like, you know, we weren't knowing how to do them properly. But yeah. you know what? When you yeah. do wrestling in a real ring, spoiler alert. It actually hurts more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I've heard, man. So I've heard. Like, it hurts uh, yeah. just as much, actually, I would say. You know, like, thing you is, your... when you're a kid, the guy doing it to you isn't 250 pounds. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, you know, for sure, man. And I think you've uh, another episode, will, like, um, actually, guys, not long, I'm going to interview the press. I have a series of questions. I know for a fact that you wrestled, you, you did train. Um, oh, yeah. So that's one thing you have over me. I only know street wrestling, you know, what I practiced, but you've done it I, professionally. Wrestled so, in front of some crowds at the good old CT. Absolutely. And you told me this was for real, you know, like, oh, yes, yeah. a lot of people say wrestling, you know, a lot of stuff is staged and choreographed, but the bumps you take and uh, the physical contact that you have with the environment and your wrestlers who are hulking uh beasts you know a lot a lot of them are great athletes locally here especially in montreal the indie oh, circuit yeah. is just beefed up with amazing talent and just you can um, check out the a, uh the uh indiequebec.com interview series i'm interviewing all kinds of guys from the the indie scene here i got the first one came out sexy eddie by the time this comes out there'll probably be a couple more Other guys check it out really good he's a, a legend. check it out uh absolutely uh Great talent, uh, your interviewing skills, uh, the press. Looking forward to the series you're going to put out. Uh, lots of new things in 2022, uh, by the way. Lots of more, uh, as well, reviews of uh, WCW and certain um, SQDC products. Uh, no, I'm joking, but um, also... No, not joking. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we'll be joking after. So, basically... Back to the show. After that was like a great moment. Now we go backstage. Brian Clark is listening to a Walkman and he gives Sanders a tape to listen to. What about Walkmans in 2000? Come on, that would be the audio tape because there's two tapes running around at the moment, like you said already. So. Um, How are you going to listen to an audio tape? You need a Walkman. You need a Walkman. So I think, I don't know if it was a commercial or they're ripping off commercials that they saw on TV and they're like, hey, let's just throw this in. This is what people want to see. This is what CEOs want to see. And we're just lazy. And I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Let me just explain the next segment because it's so confusing that I just got to lay it out how it happened in order or else we'll never be able to really explain this properly. Backstage, Jimmy Hart tells David Flair to watch the VHS tape in M.I. Smooth's limo. So M.I. Smooth is knocked out, so he can go watch that because in case people didn't know, in limos, they would have a small-ass TV 
with a VHS player, you could bring like fucking, I don't know, what would a 2000 movie be? Fight Club. You could watch that in the limo. Then the that next was... segment, because it's all tapes. We got to keep. So that was a VHS tape. The next segment, Chronic tells the cat to listen to the audio tape. Next, the audio tape, Jarrett and Steiner, on the audio tape, Jarrett and Steiner are saying Chronic are no good. They're destroying they, them. The cat gives Chronic a match versus Jarrett and Steiner because of what he heard on the audio tape. So Russo recorded that and had the tape brought to the cat that pisses off chronic big time and then Cro so like so we're having a weird storyline so with the tapes, with tapes uh, and it was just like we uh, again we're not going anywhere here with a map it's just uh, off the you know like weird storyline so basically I, though but what this sets up is that Russo is setting up Steiner and Jared to get beat up by Chronic before their main event match with Russo and whoever his partner is going to be later. But what's crazy is that technically, Jarrett, Nash, Steiner, and Russo are all in a stable together. So why the fuck is Russo betraying his own guys? Yeah, you know what? I didn't even think of that. What the f I don't even know. Like, that's true. <sighs> like, you just saw earlier on... Um... Jared and Steiner was telling Nash to go talk to their boy. And you have all this shit going on right now. And the, already the main event has changed. And now they're pulling out another match with Chronic versus JJ and Steiner. Man, this was really all over the place. I it was so confusing too. And off the tape, that didn't help. Like, wait, again, is this, uh, you know, reality TV? Um, mixed in or just pure laziness. Paparazzi, like what the paparazzi, the hell? they're filming stuff. Yeah, and it wasn't even like a like a DVD. I think DVDs exist. I think DVD format war was in two thousand one or end two thousand. I think it was two thousand one. Started getting I started popularized. Renting, yeah, like very popularized. But VHS was still like hey, super cool. But you know, and they but even you had it record on. You couldn't record on DVD. No, you couldn't. That's the you thing. You could watch laser TV. discs. That's why he was recording on a tape. Right. A tape you can. Like, you know so... what's crazy? Ta CDs came out in the 80s, but people were still listening to tapes. Yeah, no one was TV using CDs. Up until like the 2000s. Tapes yeah. and CDs existed in parallel for quite some time. They did. My parents had a Sony CD player that was placed in the living room, but I had a cassette player that I still used. I had like one of those Sony metal ones. I, mean, I got because it for my birthday a, in 98. With a, a cassette player, you can record songs off the radio. You can. You uh, can. And you can, tapes you can record things. Cheaper than That's CDs? it. That's it. Even VHS. Um, most cars didn't have CD players. They had if you cassette to players. Music in the car, it was a tape. It was a tape, 100%, man. That was super 90s. Tape was... And like, the 90s... Look, people weren't going to buy a new car just to update the stereo. No one cared. They were just like, I'll so get the like, tape. Uh... I just got my tapes. And like, yeah. you the got tape your was... old tapes. The tape was thirteen ninety nine. It wasn't expensive. The CD was nineteen ninety nine. Yeah, I remember CD. the ads. They actually had ads. They did. For music tapes. They did. They like, did. All over the place. the music video for like Nookie. And then it would be like, this week at Music World, Limp Biscuit, Significant Other, 1999 exactly. on tape, 1399. Absolutely. Or no, 1399 on tape, 1999 on CD. Absolutely. And then you had the Columbia thing go down, where Columbia you get a CD House. for a buck. Columbia House. I actually for a convinced buck. my parents to get that at one point. And what was the scam on that? What was the scam on the that? Scam if you can was, bring us back. I'll explain you the scam. You get like 13 CDs for like a dollar. Right. But then every month they would send you a CD of their choice. And um, they would charge it to you. 
and you wouldn't even like it wouldn't be a CD you wanted. Right. It would be like this month, everyone's getting Alicia Keys. Right. Why I say Alicia Keys is because I remember that's one of the CDs that they sent me when I had this thing. Right, right. And um, if you didn't want it, you would have to send it back to them and they would reimburse you. But it was like a very complicated scam. Right, right. But you had to buy over the total of the year like five more CDs at regular price or something. And if you didn't send back that Alicia Keys CD, that would count as one of your five. So then you were better off in the catalog going like, oh, I want um, Rob Zombie. I want Our Lady Peace. Because then you wouldn't be stuck with that Alicia Keys or that Britney Spears. Oh, I see. One who was Brilliant. A based on Brilliant. The thing they were counting on was you being too lazy to send the tape back and being like, yeah, because it was a huge process. 14. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was, it was a huge process. 14, uh, whatever. So I didn't end up getting screwed on it, but my parents ended up paying for it. So they they chose some of the CDs out of it, but they let me pick like half of them, which was Rob Zombie. <laughs> they ended up paying. Yeah, I ended up picking like Rob Biscuit. Zombie, Limp Biscuit. Everlast, maybe. Maybe Everlast, yeah, maybe Everlast. some Ramstein. Also, WCW released a uh, an album that I really wanted in oh, '99. Yeah. Remember, they had Everlast on it. They had the, uh, Insane Clown Posse. It was actually at, at Walmart. I remember seeing it at Walmart. Yeah, me too. But it was three twenty four ninety nine because I think it was a dual layer. Was it a dual layer CD? Yeah, because I remember I, I owned the WWF ones, but I never bought the WCW. There had aggression. To be a I, it must have been because it was too expensive. You had aggression anthology, something like that, if yeah, I'm correct. What was yeah. it called? Aggression. Yeah, it was the themes. You had themes with like some lyrics, like extra lyrics on them, if I remember. Yeah. Um, you it had the theme songs. To get because besides those CDs, you couldn't get a clean version of the wrestler's theme song. If you yes. wanted to play with your figures, yeah, yeah, and yeah, have yeah. them have the theme song when they come out and come out, yeah. For sure, which I used a, a tape recorder with the like pluggable speakers uh, to to do at some and point. Then I got a TV. CD. Or, yeah. Or you could start downloading the themes off Napster, but keep in mind that people's hard drives you could probably have what like twenty songs, and then it's like it's taking up Max. too much space. I got to absolutely. They had you know, our hard drives back in the day were like uh, fifty. Uh, like no, some of them were like four gigs, three gigs one gig uh, even before then it was like drives. it was they really were not. the hard disk that it was a hard disk spin and it was the 3.5 the big ones so the 3.5ers would just spin and like you couldn't multitask man you had to do one thing at a time it's like, like I'm a downloading robot. a song right now like yeah, I'll yeah, talk yeah. to you later same with the internet if you remember good old 56k you're like mom get off the phone i'm trying to download Roddy Piper's theme off Napster your mom's trying to call your your aunt yeah, yeah, my aunt, they talked all the time, and I was mad. I was like, I just want Roddy Piper to come out in peace in the ring because I did set up a huge pay-per-view with all my WCW toy base figures. And, um, you know, big plans for 2022 I'm going to discuss with you, but we're going to probably uh, focus towards something where it's toy biz related, uh, which because toy biz is amazing. It's one of it the is. best brands. Wrestling fans, if you guys lived here in Montreal, you would see Zellers, uh walmart uh you know toys we would us. see toys R us we would see all these beautiful figures from toy biz and we had jacks at the time i think jacks jacks toy biz i was a big fan of jacks but only because um i found the wcw figures um before toy biz really sucked so i really started collecting the jacks and then when they moved, WCW moved to Toy Biz, I still, I started buying some of the Toy Biz, but I found that they didn't have enough selection of the guys, but that was also they, a problem for Jax. Yes, they did. Man, it's true. In all the stores, they'd have multiple of one instead Both of having multiple. Of like Jericho would only had a figure like in like a year after he was in WWE. Yeah. It didn't even look like him. Exactly. 
The and uh, and at Toy Biz, it felt like they just kept putting out new Hogan's and Stings all the time. And Macho Man's we and the DDP. Got, like, um, well, we got like one Rick Steiner, one Big Papa Pump. I had them. But you know who had a good selection? Zellers. Zellers, Zellers was very random. Zellers, the figures were a bit cheaper. They were cheaper. They were a bit cheaper. That was the place to buy toys. Walmart too, but uh, in Toys R Us, of course, you find all the cool toys like the ring with, you know, the Bash at the Beach ring in the 99, you know, remember? You know what's the crazy one? is um, that how much figures have gone up? Because in those days, I remember I would get my allowance in 2000. It yeah, was 20 bucks a week. Same here. That was my allowance. It was 15, about 15, 20 15? On, on my good days. Yeah, 15 or 20. And I'd be able to buy what uh, a toy was, what, $7.99? Could go exactly. up to $9.99. What I was say. Walmart was always $7.99. Um, but I remember Zellers having deluxe sets. They had good toys, man. Look, look, because this is how it worked in stores, right? You had your regular $7.99. Then you had deluxe sets. Remember, deluxe sets were always yeah. two, three and bucks more. It would more. be like, Maybe 30 bucks, but you'd get like four figures plus weapons. I found Perry Saturn uh, Slam and Crunch with the dress and uh, from Slam and Crunch, WCW Slam and Crunch at Zellers. I found a variation of Nash, not the classic Smash and Slam one where his palms are open. Yeah, they had different they, editions, different. They did. Um, they did. Yeah, they had different, um, even the WWF, they would have different. Um, it would be like maybe the same figure, but with different uh, different attire. For sure, for like sure. Chase variant. That's what they call it today. We should do. Uh, we should definitely do a show on that. Um, we now we'll jump back I can to bust out some figures. Absolutely, that I have here. absolutely, man. Yeah, you've been collecting some, uh, so that that's super cool. I, I saw some of the a lot of figures you got, which is awesome. And you'll this check is a good out, collection to have. Check out on uh, our YouTube feed my interview with the wrestler Nova Kane. And he Nova runs Kane. a um, he runs a page on Facebook which is wrestling trading of memorabilia and buying and selling. And this guy has so much merch. And he recently got back into the toy biz, and he I think he just bought uh, the whole collection for four hundred fifty bucks, if I'm not mistaken. Man, that's worth every penny. These toys were beautifully made back in the day. Uh, I mean, 2000. Back, Toy Biz yeah, also yeah. made some of Marvel. our also favorite Amazing Spider-Man yeah, uh, figures. figures. The Marvel Which Legends as well. You can find in stores now. Now, amazing. That, They're expensive. They're like twenty six ninety nine now. They can go. They can vary from like 22 to no, 19. You know what's really cool 30. about the new Spider-Man figures that they put out for the Toy Biz? The... Um, they're exactly like the ones in the 90s, but they added some characters that were from the animated series, but they de yes. didn't make figures of. Right, you can get right. like, a, I think Gwen Stacy has a figure. She never had right. a figure. A right. Mary Jane. Right. So you could really complete that universe because those figures were so good, but there were some characters that they didn't make. That's absolutely true, man. Toy Biz, uh, Toy Biz man, pioneer the world. Absolutely, the they did Marvel. They even did the Street Fighter. They did. They they literally dominated it. And we had a warehouse, I think, or a production in the in West Montreal. Island on the yeah in Montreal on the Trans Canadian line. You had Toy Biz Grand. It was called Grand Toys Grand. You had the Toy Biz logo, and you had made by Grand LTG Which is like the Quebec. It was the Quebec company. Uh, subsidiary company. And this is like, I think that's why, man, Zellers really had good uh, selection. They 100%. might have had the connection, the hookup. Man, to, 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 to them directly, even Toys R Us, no, uh, no oh, doubt yeah. about it. That's where I got the ring with uh, Sting and, and Goldberg and the referee and the belt. You had a belt that came with it, the Nitro ring. It was a special edition. I was edition buying so them. much figures in those days, though, that like when they would put out a new line of figures... I would literally buy the whole thing. Yeah, me too. I'd buy as much as I can. would even be out. Yeah, yeah. So I would be going back to Toys R Us. <coughs> and there wouldn't be any, like, I would find something to buy, like, a figure that I didn't want from an earlier line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, I remember one, at one point, I was like, oh, I don't ever want to buy the... Uh, uh, too sexy Brian Christopher, Jerry the King Lawler two pack because I just hated both of them at the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, you're like, what am I gonna do with this? They're just gonna get, you know, like I'd use them as a jobber. Uh, they'd be jobbers. Point, I I was so into buying figures that I was like, okay, I'm already here at Toys R Us. 
I want more figures. Fuck it, I'll buy them. So I, with the Jacks, I had almost everyone. Dude, I bought the Jim Cornette figure, by the way. Me it too, was me for too. a two ninety nine, I think. Exactly, it was one one ninety nine at Walmart. They had it in a basket with like an old uh, can. It was like twenty cents. It was an old uh, Campbell's soup can. Remember they had that basket? Yeah, like, They're like, uh, ah, my liquidation basket. Just and they, it was two ninety nine or uh, one ninety nine. Yeah, I at one point it. they put the managers down cheap like that. I remember I bought. Uh, I think I, that's when I bought Jim Cornette too. Because I had Jim Cornyn, I think that's also when I bought my Vince McMahon. Yeah, Vince McMahon was a cool figure to have, for sure, man. I wanted it, too, because I do remember, yes, all the managers. And even Jax, at some point, the Jax figures, uh, they dropped down to, like, four ninety nine to, like, half price. Yeah, at the end. I don't know if you remember at the end, uh, but WCW remained. And then they dropped WCW down. I was like, man, what? They dropped Jax, but not Toy Biz down. And then they ended up doing it. So I remember that Christmas, I bought, like, 12, which equaled I out to 50 I think they might have put the the jacks down when they started bringing out that new generation of figures which would come with the titan tron thing yes yes you would put them and uh, you'd have they to buy the set for the titan tron that was awesome everyone wanted that's what i had mostly it was those jacks with the two metal contacts exactly. on the bottom of their feet so I had and the they had the part. Yeah, and they had that beautiful plastic. Um, I used, I made an arena with my couch, like my couch. Uh, I made rings out of it, and I had used that logo that they send you, the classic WWF white scribbled and red, the attitude WWF. So remember, they had that in every figure. Oh, yeah. It's a lot of plastic they wasted, man. Wait. I had Billy Gunn. Wait one second. Here you go, ladies and gentlemen. The Prez is going to go whip out some of his classic uh, figures. We're just, you know, um, we're really attached to the 2000s. So the 2000s, what was huge is, uh, you know, uh, the action figures, the magazines. The shows weren't, you know, for WCW, they were terrible, but we would reenact everything with the figures. We collected the figures. All right. um, Prez before, had a lot of figures. Before we get back to this Nitro, let's just put a couple things into context. Those little plastic things that came with every figure that you were talking about. Absolutely. There you go. This. Look at the mint condition. Yeah, it this. is nice, sir. Eh? It is absolutely well done back in the day. Just look at that. It was literally carved out. So this would um, come. And as you notice, it has a little, a little clitoris on there. It does. Uh, <laughs> and Mike. every figure, rest in peace to one of our favorites. Owen Hart. A nice, beautiful Jax I just have Absolutely. Here These were great figures, too. These, honestly, I bought... Uh, you have you have quite a lot of them, actually. You yeah. have These ones, a great collection. I, uh, my old ones, I um, pretty much gave them to someone at one point. But then I rebought these uh, at the beginning of the pandemic. You and rebought them and even that. more. You actually... Um, you bought everything. These are gorgeous figures. Honestly, the articulation wasn't as good, but they were gorgeous at that time because they, were they weren't that expensive. They were fun, man. Uh, with the ring, uh, it was probably... I like how they were rubber. It was more... You could do more... Yeah. Uh, yeah. When you hit, you can do hits. Like, you can do a light punch. Uh, you could do a strong punch by holding his arm with the thumb, right? And making it like... Uh, they were great figures, honestly. They, they had a good variety. They didn't articulate, they articulate that much, but they were bendy. So it was like yeah. a good, like... You could... A good mix. And while I was getting this out, just an example of one of the old school. Oh, my God. Full Metal, the album. That is classic as it is the Prez. I honestly, that is well, classic. man. 95. So this was yes. like before, but they, it was so cool at the time. On these things. Yeah. And it was a CD. It was in the tape. Like this was big time. Like it was. It would also beautiful. be available on tape. But that is awesome, man. I remember when it was a yellow symbol like that sometimes? It was on the shows the always in, the back. in your house as well. In your house yeah. started out like that, eh? In your house took that a lot, the which very was kiddish, cool. cartoonish Super. look. Super. It was a cartoonish era. Good times as well. Indeed. So that's a bit about the merch. Drifted because off because we'll the show, the merch, yeah, we, because we the, you know the shows the were merch. terrible at the time, guys. So when we buy the figures, we would make our own storylines, like something that would make sense. We were better at writing storylines. We're like twelve-year-olds, like... thirteen-year-olds writing amazing storylines because they knew what was going on. They knew who needed to get pushed. They knew, who, you know. So it was like just... I'm gonna have a casket match with Kane and the Undertaker. <laughs> Absolutely. But who's it comes out of the casket? It's Sting. Absolutely. 
I did great matches. I did Booker T versus Nash at home. I did uh, not what you saw on the pay-per-views. But they never made I a Vince Russo figure. <clears throat> I never put dumb stipulations unless it was a ladder match. Uh, it was cool. You know, I had but good look, stipulation. Here, here's just an example of like year 2000 WCW characters that were very popular at the time of this. Chronic, the Harris Brothers, and Russo. All five of those never had an action figure. Right. To be honest, absolutely, man. So, like, you I couldn't really replicate what was going on in the shows. Sure. The Harris Brothers, you could use your old DOA Jax figures. Sure, sure, sure you can. <laughs> or uh, I had a variation of a Goldberg once. I, I used them as a uh, Don Harris. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, I just took two bald guys and pretend that hey, they were the that you know, and they had to be there long. Was one Goldberg figure they put out. He was wearing a tank top, jeans, and he came with I, a hard hat. I did remember. He came with a jackhammer, bro. It was that was. He uh, looked like was he was funny. part of the village people. He did, dude. He he had the yellow boots, like real long yellow boots, and the jeans. Like, dude, he looked like uh, yeah, that was very very odd. I had one variation where he had a uh, white T-shirt and he was in his normal trunks. And uh, black boots, and he was long. So, but he was too big to be Goldberg, like too long and tall. Like you know, yeah, they were yeah, yeah. scaled weirdly <clears throat> sometimes. Their uh, their limbs were way too long, in a way. Exactly. Exactly. It looked good in some ways they were playing, but in other but ways, straight. Like I had the Sid Vicious figure, and Sid Vicious was awesome. He was built nice. Uh, which I found at Zellers, by the way, it was very rare. It was the same line they had Jarrett with in the guitar, but um, he, he was really him. tall. Like his arms were too long. He almost yeah, touched. I his... remember I had a Kevin. Um, I had a a Nash. No, not a Nash. A Scott Hall, and he was like so skinny. His arms were so skinny. So we have back to the show. I mean, yeah, yeah we're, to we're gonna show. do episodes. Storm. <laughs> Where, where, where were we? We're bragging. At, uh, yeah, Storm was bragging Storm. about the yeah the he success, the last night's success. He was introducing Jim Duggan, obviously as the newest member. We were all heartbroken. Um, Duggan had cut his hair and shaved his face. Looked really weird, honestly. He looked like just a weirdo. Uh, the the way he was, almost unrecognizable. Like a Baptist preacher, a Baptist preacher. That was pretty inappropriate, but yeah, I think he. I do remember him saying that. Um, <laughs> And then, you know, it comes out with his classic. He started fighting for a country, uh, takes him for granted, flag. treats him like garbage, brings us back to the painful memories when he fought Goldberg and he was taken away. In this, remember they did that weird storyline with him having cancer, getting punched in the gut by yeah, and Heel like, Goldberg and bleeding from the me, mouth. Yeah, no one cared. He's like, everyone in that arena was just chanting. That was hatred, man. That was a bit hatred. Like, I felt that a bit. I was like, man, you know what? That's like now when I seen it recently, I was like, oh, my God, they did do but that like, to you, Duggan. In that era, though, in 99, 2000, people weren't as nice as they are today. Exactly, exactly. People were kind of assholes, and it was kind of like cool to be an asshole in a way. Like, there for was sure, none of this sure. stop bullying shit. Like, bullying was bullying was on bullying was like a part of everything it was it was very bullying so the goldberg brought us back you know tearful memories with jim duggan so we got storm primetime and hacksaw taking on the mia members lieutenant loco corporal cajun and hugh morris the crowd loves team canada here of course being in kitchener um it's a decent match this feud like, it feels like each faction, this was their only feud that they had. Like, each faction only existed to feud with the other faction. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So it was just, uh, it was just gangs versus gangs all the time at that time. Yeah. And uh, it was all those feuds of stables. And it was big. It was big, the stable era, man. They came out with way too many in WCW. Like, uh, and, they were... and, like... The rules, the rules are all over the place. Like the wall choke slams prime time through a table. Um, like there's no DQ in this match. Uh, there's no DQ in most WCW matches, but for some reason, the last world title match ended in a DQ. So you never know what match is going to be a DQ and what isn't. Right, right. It was always like that. It was always a surprise, and you just had no idea. 
But like, it's not uh, a cool surprise. It's like an annoying surprise. For sure. Uh, obviously, the misfits are heels here. Uh, we have misfits in action versus uh, the Team Canada. Um, Only local heels sense because they're in Canada. Normally exactly because it, when they're back in the states, they're your you know your your uh, baby faces. But uh, local sense direction in the in the corner, nice splash, skipper, uh, amazing talent, honestly. Uh, nice Cajun Flash Larue. Great. He was great. He was underused. Uh, Lash Larue too. It's just you know Lash yeah. Larue is the Cajun. He was he, he was good talent. Just they threw him around anywhere. They found time for him. They're like, hey, you do this that. So Cajun, a uh, uh, good cruiser rate. Um, always loved Storm. Comes in for some good tag offs with Duggan, uh, the ultimate heel the ultimate in the traitor. states, yeah. the traitor dude, the retired guy. Uh, we have a wall. A wall, they changed his name to the wall. Was I liked him with Berlin? He was pretty scary, to be honest. They and that weird, that. that weird nine uh, two thousand um, nitro with him and Hogan. Remember where he yeah. was in the rafters? It's so it's weird, right, by the way. We have to do that one because that, that still way. to this day is one of the most confusing segments ever. <laughs> it was very odd, honestly. Um, but one thing so I'll say, to... I'm surprised WWE didn't use the wall when they bought WCW. Right, right. So, um, for sure, they didn't. They didn't. Uh, just And rest in peace, he, he died not too long yeah. uh, after, the man, wall, from a heart attack. Peace, so, we had a good match with, good, you know, uh, Skipper, uh, Storm, always a pleasure to watch them. Uh, the wrestling wasn't actually that bad. The story is just the problem lies with the main character, which was Duggan. Like, who the hell cares about the comedy goof bullshit with like, Duggan. We care for a week um, just for the shock factor of not seeing him how we normally like him. For in sure. The USA, but like he, he's the second week, it's just ridiculous. Like but dude, yeah, because he was supposed to you be used as an important heel and but he's in the mid card. Like a super we know it's uh, going nowhere. It's like, like it's yeah, it's no a dec- it's a decent story, you know. Like I know what they were trying to do, but uh, not with Duggan involved, man. Come on. Uh, well, Duggan ends up getting the win here. He beats Morris, and then they break Morris's leg in a chair with, with the boards. Uh, Duggan's two by four. The classical American two by four. Good wood coming probably from Minnesota. Uh, some yeah. good trees down there. But uh, then we cut to uh, you know, which was cool. I, I like them because they were both heels. I hated both of them, even though I did respect Steiner um, yelling at Russo. Yeah, intimidating yeah, exactly. him. Russo says he has nothing to do with it, but like, and then they're giving him bullshit, and it's just you know, again, uh, about what twenty-five minutes, thirty minutes ago, we would cut to that confusing. Um, it's just getting more backstory. and more confusing. It's so confusing, honestly. Yeah. At this point, yeah. Russo, at the end of that segment, we come away with he still doesn't have a partner, though. He's still like looking around for a partner. To make it even weirder, we cut to Mike Awesome and yeah. Gary Coleman. Gary arrived back from the night before. Took and a he's like, oh, Pamela. Yes, he before. took. And he was just checking Pamela out, being lewd, uh, coming out. And Awesome's like, you have no idea. Some weird. He called um, awesome, awesome a bastard and run away from him. <laughs> really random. Um, I mean, he just got beaten down. And he's riding with Awesome. And then we have I don't mind Vampiro. Gary Coleman, but like... Yeah, yeah, it was just... I think I think he... Uh, we saw him on TBS on one of those uh, dinner and a movie uh, probably, episodes. Probably and sure. they're like, hey, come on in to Nitro. You know, you could do maybe some Thunder. You're Gary Coleman. You know, everyone loves you. Uh, so random. Comes out with Mike Awesome nonetheless. Like, M2. He was still a great wrestler. Love Mike Awesome. But his uh, gimmick was getting just overtiring by Dan. Was, you know, it was funny, but... Just like so kitschy. He was such a better wrestler. He didn't need to be doing all this ridiculous. I thing. know they could have just done it like uh, good classing wrestling, you know, like what he make did with Lance Storm. Like make him a monster, and that's it. You didn't have to make him, uh, you know, goofy. And then we have the clowns, Vampiro and clowns approaching the empty bus. It's just so random, man, throwing out everywhere. Like, come on, like I fit, enjoy- It's like they needed to like fit them in, like no matter. Yeah, what. later on they had a good match for sure, but it was just so weird. Um, the, how they threw everything. We cut to Chronic. Uh, Chronic who they were focusing Jared on to Steiner. a lot last pay per view. Yes, so that's a yeah. beast for a tag team match. Honestly, we at the time I was like, yo, uh, 
Chronic was these two huge tag teamers against, um, you know, your uh, biggest heels, Jeff Jarrett and Scott Steiner. But um, then you get Nash. Comes and the trailers. And he says Chronic isn't in the same league as Jarrett and Steiner. Starts and that insulting the thrillers them. want to prove themselves instead. So then, you know, I, I just don't understand, like, why the man, fuck would he do this? Man, uh, Chandler's like, he Johnny. He doesn't want to wrestle in the main event. It's so weird. He's chosen just to go out to beat up Chronic. And like, uh, why? Why do the thrillers like? He like told them off at the beginning of the show, but now they're accepting. Like, okay, you can be our coach, anyways. Or like, do whatever you want. Like, it was just so weird, man. Do and you think they were on drugs? Do you think they were doing drugs? I think they just. <laughs> Russo is just like loving the fact that he's getting paid so much and he's like like who gives a shit like like he just... didn't even like have to care about his job you know he's just like totally checked out mentally so then it ends up being mike sanders and johnny the bull versus chronic the rest of the thrillers come in so it ends up being all of them versus chronic which like again like the rules are thrown out the book here there's no actual wcw rule book like no match has a standard set of rules that you follow you don't For even sure. know the announcers Absolutely. don't even know no and it was so random the rules of the match are exactly they're like hey sanders johnny you're chosen to go out to go beat up chronic these two monsters that are just going to crush your skull in the ring uh so i think the match was and then super... jared and steiner after all that jump they jump Chronic yeah. with weapons naturally. go for the pin, and somehow it's a win for Jared and Steiner. They yeah, come in with a play. Segment. It was just so – it was just – it was garbage, honestly. Um, then it cuts again to Russo. We're seeing so much of Russo, man. I know. Uh, you're just getting Russo. sickened. Seemed to go to a dressing room. Dressing room two uh, was is always a pinnacle of wrestling, by the way. Whether any era, the dressing room is quite a yeah. It's a mile. I mean, it, it is wrestling itself, to be honest. If if you think about it, um, the clowns, point, vampiro, are being yeah. crazy, spraying everyone. Uh, the the bus, I mean, and uh, yeah, I've just yeah, lost he, by here. He I'm, I've lost. Three Town tells, uh, tells Mike Awesome that Vampiro is the one who vandalized his bus and the ICP. Awesome is super pissed. And then we get Russo asking Sting to be his partner. Oh, man. I was so mad at that time. I was like, what? My guy getting asked by Russo to piece of shit. Sorry Russo for my language. Russo somehow questions Sting's heart and Sting accepts. Because... Right. They're like, saucing him. They're saying apparently that the Showtime doesn't have it in him anymore. The franchise well, yeah, doesn't but like, have basically, it. Basically, Sting got screwed out of his title shot earlier in the show. He did. So he shouldn't even have to be in the tag match. He should get his title shot anyways. Exactly. But it does look very babyface to go in the fight and fight again for the right anyways. Yeah, exactly. You know what? So that was classic babyface. That was definitely a hero, uh, almost. So, um, yeah, for sure. But again, throwing everything around with the main event is just Sting's crazy. Sting's character is the only character who's acting logically in the whole main event scene at this for point. For sure. Also, uh, after that, we just cut to the swimsuit contest uh, to crown the Miss WCW, as they were always they were they were pushing towards Miss WCW. Um, Howard Stern's whack pack. Were the judges like Howard Stern was mad uh, popular back in '98? Oh my god, 2001. His podcasts were inappropriate. Like, like they were, the we world... didn't have Joe Rogan then. So oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't have Joe Rogan then. Uh, it's, uh, Joe Rogan is the what the world was a much different place. Um, like how they love um, exploiting women here in like these shows, as we see, just for like was... how hot they are. Like yeah, yeah. That's what. Howard Stern was all about it. He was the most popular. He was the most popular show in the states. 
Exactly. And then, you know, you could see it coming from there what's going to happen with uh, Howard Stern as the judges. Then again, randomly we cut. And this is happening. Like, it's just as the show's unfolding, you have these weird vignettes backstage and just nothing made sense. So then we cut back to Mike Awesome, who comes to Ranth, uh, which I loved Mike Awesome, whether he was goofy or not, great wrestler, about Vampiro and, and then the clowns making it hard for him to be happy. Like, they're annoying. They're a pestilence to him. Um, so right away we have a nice match, a hardcore match between Vampiro Mike Awesome, Mike Awesome Vampiro. hardcore match. That was exciting when I saw that. Watching it recently, I said, "Man, that's exciting!" Why? Uh, they're, they're both good talent. Like Vampiro uh, never went this full, but versus Mike Awesome in a hardcore match, man, that's where Mike Awesome shined. Actually, yeah, uh, I, there's ECW. so much shit on this show going on, but like. There's a couple good parts. Like, this is a decent part of the show. This was decent. Great talent. And, you know, yeah, it was, it was, it was a good part. Um, comes in Vampiro with his new look. You know, you know, he just recently changed his look with his kendos. He came in with kendos. He was trying to be, like, more dark carnival samurai styled. Yeah, maybe. Uh, uh, martial artist. Because he, he, he. Using a bit with the great mood of the gimmick a bit. Because he had a moveset that was very, he mixed it like with martial arts. Now he did, he always those, did those kicks and, and the, Thrust, the way he did. Uh, Absolutely. Sure. For sure. At uh, one point, uh, Mike Awesome does a uh, kind of like Undertaker, no hands dive over the top rope to yeah, the floor. Sends them to the floor with a big dive. Uh, and then they go into the crowd, yeah. which was ben cool. Hero they also did that. like a balcony dive. It's not a super high balcony, but still pretty awesome. Right. That's a holy shit chant. Right, right. And Tony selling it. Tony selling it like there was no tomorrow, that hardcore match. I, I love Tony for that. They, such the, the commentators did make a difference. If if the commentators were awful, dude, I would the show would have just been it, it's still atrocious, by the way, but it would have been depressing. Unwatchable. They say segments. Unwatchable, a lot of segments. Unwatchable man, yes. So that one ends with Mike Awesome power bombing Vampiro from the inside of the ring to the outside through a table. And puts them away. The holy shit chance in this match. For sure. For sure. And uh, um, yeah, like people loved hardcore in this era, man. People definitely. Loved uh, yeah, man, because it, you, we also had it in WWF. They were pulling it off real good, man. Oh, yeah. You know, especially when Raven came back. Like when Raven came back, they umphed it. And then, you know, you had guys like Kane go in it and then other big show. You know, it was, and... it was big show. It was crazy. It was good. Uh, but this was a decent hardcore brawl, but it's just more sad than anything else. Uh, because Mike Awesome is far better uh, when it comes to athleticism. Like they, yeah, yeah. you know, they should use him in for his, way. exactly, man. Um, he, and he's stuck in some bullshit humorous gimmick. So, yeah, backstage we see Booker T comes to see Russo, but we don't see what they talk about. Then it Freaks him out David too. Blair, he finds out who it is. Sees the tape finally. In the limo, and then he destroys the tape in the parking lot, and just like jets down the street, just bounces. That was again. like his gimmick. And this is one thing I was thinking about that we didn't mention in the fall brawl review when he puts the figure four on the mailman. He just leaves. He, he storms. Left. He's at his own house. He just like runs down the street. It's like you're at your own house. Where the fuck are you running to, dude? That's like. You know, like shooting someone or you know yeah, doing like bad deeds, and then you like, I gotta and get you the leave. Fuck out of here. Yeah, you're like, I'm gonna shoot him in front of my door. How uh, you know my doorstep where the cops will come and I'll be. He was just wanted. He was a mental case. I'm sorry for the term, but that's what they were trying to uh, put yeah, him yeah, as yeah, a, a mental point. case, Definitely. which is you know. So <laughs> finally, after all this insanity, Jared and Steiner come out, and it ends up being. And they think it's Russo and Sting. But instead of Russo and Sting, Booker T comes out. It's Booker T and Sting versus And Sting Jarrett versus and Jarrett. Jarrett. And so now let's just get something straight. This is, um, as I see, the, the main event. And as you guys know, from the first minute that this show started, we had completely different main event. And then it progressed into different into this. Yeah, like, So it got recycled all the way. It was like a machine. Was Nash was in it at one point. Dude, yeah, man. Like, they filtered it all the way and they're like, oh, here's the finished product. Like, I don't know again. I don't think they were doing drugs. It was just really n'importe quoi. They, uh, we, we ended up, you know, it was cool to see 
I baby faces Booker like, T and Sting. It almost feels like they were writing the show as it was happening. I think so. I think they're just like, like it oh, was that disorganized. Dude, it was like us in high school when we had an exam. We're like, oh, I have five minutes now to uh, study. Yeah, like, better <laughs> Off the paper, like, oh, man, I'm going to go through it. I think that's what they did because no one gave a shit, ultimately. Everyone was getting paid so much money. Everyone. That's They're like, it. we don't have to work. What the, f-? you know, let's just come in. And especially showed with Nash. Who practically killed the company, by the way, I think. This is makes sense that in the end, he really uh, peed on it. I yeah, love Nash. And in the end, like, he killed Nash it, man. did nothing on this show come besides on, like man. a bunch of shit promo. Uh, bite me. Come on. Um, but so Booker T comes out instead. Russo, we have the classic so baby faces T thing. ends up getting the fall, he's his own number one contender, which makes no sense. For sure. Again, the stipulation that they use the BATB 99 they're using now and uh, yeah. again they got but lazy. But that's the thing like, like the pay-per-views we watched the logic wasn't as flawed it's really right. the, these nitros or maybe just right. this one in particular. Right, right. So the, yeah the match starts out they brawl around the ringside Sting hits his splash off the top which he doesn't always do every match that's one of his like old school moves. Yeah. Even the commentators say at one point they don't understand what's going on. Yeah, they're like, what? You know, they're, and you have him flying off, you know, uh, the top rope, which is a special move. Yeah. So it does it when it's, uh, as we say in French, ça brasse, right? So yeah. um, he's just getting rowdy there with that. Um, but I think also, even at some point, you can tell the commentators was like, what the is going on. Well, like, like, uh, after all this confusion, at one point, then we get Medeja comes out and hits, um, I think she hits Booker T with the lead pipe. With the pipe. And then Miss Jones, who is the cat's secretary. And slams her. Yeah. Slams her on the outside on the concrete, and then they brawl to the back. Becomes a, like a tag match. to the match. back part, I must say, reminds me a lot of AEW today. They always have, because a lot of guys are in factions, <laughs> they always end up brawling and then they brawl to the back. For sure. And then you have Booker playing uh, some uh, Ricky Morton uh, for, uh, for a bit. And then we get Jarrett, with a, we, he gets uh, slapped with a sleeper. Um, Booker finally Steiner's fights with him. still using the face protector he was yes. using at Paul Brawl the night before. Yes. Definitely looked like The Undertaker, but um, he got punched in the face by Goldberg. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so then we have Booker who fights with a nice suplex, breaks up everything. Um, Russo he gives comes the out tag. then. He comes out, he actually uh, gives the tag to Sting. Um, but like, yeah, it really doesn't make sense, but Booker has nothing to lose here. Just stacks Sting. Um, yeah, Book- so Russo, he tosses Booker T the bat. Booker hits Steiner in the face mask with the bat, but he puts Russo on Steiner. So right. technically, Russo right, right, he does. is the number one contender. But so, like, and that's how the fucking show ends. Okay, that's crap. the match before with uh, Chronic, where it's like the natural born thrillers started, but Jared and Steiner end up getting the pin. The same fucking thing happens here. Yeah, Russo didn't exactly. even start the match, but he gets the pin. Man, that's some bullshit. Like again, they ended like that. The details. It's all in the details. This show, the talent on the show, even the storylines. Okay, pick one of the tape ones and save the other one. It could have been not that bad, but you can't have finishes to matches like this that make no sense. And, like, doing the same cut type of finish back-to-back when it's one that doesn't make sense, that's just, like, that's just horrible, man. That's in detail, exactly. And if you look at this and you break this down detail by detail, it is incredibly, frustratingly uh, horrendous. Honestly, this could have been a nice tag match if they let us see a tag match, but we saw a big mess with so many damn storylines mixed together at once. And it was so hard to keep track of. Like, man, I'd flip through the channel uh, to check something else quickly and then I'd come back. Like, I wouldn't, you know. So it was just like, I was like, what the f- like I needed a break kind of. I was like, what the fuck is going on? Um, and then you just 
the problem boils also, like you said, that you could have the same match without Chronic when they're throwing in there. Uh, but uh, I don't know, man. Just this There's was the so worst many, ending, I think. Just moments where you're like, what the fuck is going on here? So Dude. many backstage moments. So overall rating, honestly, yeah, on the show so was, uh, I'll be honest, I am going to give, I'm not being harsh, but this was, it went from like a nice five, you know, for the previous pay-per-view. It was not bad in the Nitro before and the other pay-per-view before. It was fives, and this man went to a three to me. I'm going to give it a two. A two, okay. I'm I was being nice, but I'll stay with, yeah, I'll, I'll, be, I'll spare them. I think there was only like two actual matches. That made sense in the whole... You know, time. so I, I gave three because I got to give it to uh, Mike Awesome. Mostly it was Mike Awesome and Vampiro. Um, so th this was match. Th th this was good to see. And then the Booker and uh, Sting. <laughs> and to um, put this into context, Raw at honest. the time was like The Rock feuding with DX. Oh, uh, dude, you had Taz, Taz coming in. in. Kurt dude, Angle you was had Kurt Angle. Was, yeah, and it, it, Triple H was getting mad. And then you had Dudley um, Boys, I think the with Dudley the Boys, Christian and the Edge and Christian, Boys, like Hardy Boys. WWF was um, even their openers. Annoying. Yeah, man. You had like Blackman, I think. And uh, dude, like just, just an example. Too cool who weren't even close to being the top tag team, were probably more popular than, like, they were WCW besides they were. Goldberg, Sting. They or were, Goldberg. they were. That's sad, man. It was too cool, like, really, like, low grade, but it was Scotty high grade hottie. compared to Scotty Too Hottie, dude. Ew. And, and this Brian is the Christopher, time rest that I'm going to mention Brian Christopher on this podcast. <laughs> never rest in peace, by the way. WCW. For sure, never even wrestled, but he's, his name still came up. Rest in peace. But, uh, man, oh, yeah, they... Next week, buddy, we're going to get off these nitros because, honestly, I don't know how long we would last reviewing these nitros. No, I mean, I'm having difficulties. Uh, we're not you know, going to torture just, ourselves like that. Yeah, yeah, for real, and, and, and are the listeners. What we're, we're going to do go is we're going to go back into the pay-per-views. We're yeah. going to do Halloween Havoc 2000. Nine, yeah, 2000, amazing. So uh, no more nitros for now, um, you know, snooze. We'll says, maybe but... hit a nitro along the way, but... We're gonna yeah, yeah, for sure. Halloween Havoc 2000. Absolutely. Beautiful. I don't even remember watching this pay-per-view whatsoever, so it's going to be... I only remember Jarrett putting on a classic Surfer Sting uh, oh, attire yeah. and then uh, calling him out on some nitros and leading it up. And Halloween Havoc was one of the pay-per-views I actually ordered with my dad. Uh, for thirty four ninety nine back in the day because we wanted to watch the main event. I, I forgot, but I all I remember is Jeff Jarrett and Sting feuding. And then well, everyone thought Sting was going to come back and revive himself as the uh, surfer Sting. As remember? the surfer Sting, yeah. Remember that? That was, yeah. I was like, oh, no, what's going on, man? No because more uh, had Brandon Because gone Lee. back to red and yellow the year before. We so we were sure. maybe waiting. So yeah, as there was a lot of rumors and our classic uh, big shout out, guys, if you remember uh, 1280 uh, in the ring. Brian the Guppy. Station. Brian the Guppy, Aaron friend. Amadeus, if you're ever out there and you hear this, it's me, man, the Stinger, dude. Uh, we had the Creep Show. We had all these classic characters and they Oldie really, Oldie Calhoun, I love North Star, all these good guys, man. Um, uh, Nicodeus, uh, they had the spoiler. Uh, um, you yeah, had Waldo spoiler. Geraldo, the spoiler, uh, which is a good friend of mine, by the way. Shout out to you, uh, spoiler. Um, also, they, man, they thought it was... Two wrestlers who are in AEW now. Yeah. Um, 2.0. That's uh, Matt Lee and Scott Parker. They've even wrestled against Sting in AEW. They found out about Quebec independent wrestling from Absolutely. in the ring. You told me. Yes. Same yes, way yes, yes. as so, us. So, yeah. so big time, man. So shout out to these guys because these guys came out with that theory. Uh, they did cover a lot of the 2000s 100%. And uh, looking forward for Halloween Havoc, I completely forgot. I'm going to delve into more surprise now uh, because yeah. time will pass. And then um, we, we cut to the... Uh, October, so things change. So I'm looking forward to see what kind of craziness uh, Halloween Havoc 2000 had. Yeah, man. And I think I can even remember your Halloween costume in 2000 was 
A scream mask. A scream it was guy. a scream mask, man. I found that mask nowhere except Piscine Perrin on Tash Row, and it was $35. You know, back oh, in yeah. 2000, $35 was a lot. I could have bought four uh, smashing uh, slam had figures. had to do some good negotiating with your parents to get that one. Absolutely, man. A lot of, uh, a lot of 60% I had to give them. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Halloween Havoc. I've even heard on Eric Bischoff's podcast, he said that, yeah, Starcade historically was always the biggest WCW event. But yeah, by the time was... Bischoff took over, he put more emphasis on Halloween Havoc some years, actually. Yeah, absolutely, for sure. Halloween Havoc had solid, as you would say, uh, cards for then because they had, you know, big storylines. Like, Jared's thing was pretty cool. I thought I hated Jared, so it was perfect that my superhero... At least he wasn't getting burned. That really broke my heart, but... Um, it, yeah, yeah, for sure. They focused it, and then I think uh, it was more on May Mayhem, which was after, right? Was it Mayhem that was after? I believe so. No, we're gonna we're gonna check that Mayhem. out. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. but they changed the the logo. I think it was like a square logo like this. We're, yeah. We'll we'll dive right into those for sure. But uh, Havoc 2000. So, ladies and gentlemen, up. thank you for listening to another episode of the Turner Podcasting System here on IndieQuebec.com. Thanks for listening either on YouTube or on Spotify or Anchor. I'm the Prez Stinger. Let them know what's up. Happy New Year's, all wrestling fans. Uh, long live the 514. Um, long live the classic. And we shall see you guys in the new year with more content. Check out 